We start to budget probably 50% of our annual budget for transmission alone. We're not going to cut it. So if you do that, because it's, it's a business decision. If the government takes 50% of our annual budget, for instance, to fix transmission grid, how are they going to recoup the money? Then what happens to the rest of the economy? So it comes back to the, um, to the discos and eventually to the off-takers. Um, if you do these numbers, is there a reflective cost in the cost of the generation? An average, uh, if you generate power from diesel, for instance, if you run a diesel generator, you probably are you're generating your power for yourself at about 65 to 70 naira per kilowatt hours. Now, the same kind of power coming through the grid is being sold depending on which disco you belong to, maybe about 45 naira and which category of customer you have. Your maximum demand cost customer, you are about um, uh, 45 naira plus or minus. So now, if um, manufacturers association, where many maximum demand customers belong to. They say, listen, before you, we're not saying you don't increase the prices, you know, there's all of that dancing around. They say, but if you want to do it, let's discuss it. Gas price is not stable. So across the value chain, and there is the huge hole that we actually haven't come out of from what the discos are owing, what the jenkos are owing. And I can also say, maybe that's where we start to talk about government. One of the biggest uh, debtors, to these institutions is also the government and government institutions. So if you are able to sort out, say, 700 um, uh, billion that is being owed, um, I can't remember now if it's the Genco or the Discos, and you bring everybody back to ground zero, and say, I don't know whether we're going to talk, or talk about underwriting existing <laughs> debts or whatever it is, but if you bring everybody to ground zero and say, let's start afresh, Maybe we can then start to have some serious conversation about going forward. But in practical terms, that's not going to happen. Because if somebody is owing, then they have to pay. Where is that money going to come from? And the end consumers are saying, I, I haven't had lights in my house for the last five years. What am I going to pay? For people that, you know, this is a country that, you know, a lot of things happen. A lot of, you know, crude things happen and we just take it for granted. For a community not to have electricity for five years, and someone is keeping quiet, and there's a state governor, and there's a commissioner, and there's a local government chairman, of, you know, I think some people should just be fired, or some people should not even bring their heads out, you know. And this is not peculiar to just that community oh, alone. Sure. It's across communities, communities in Nigeria. And things just go around, and we just take it normal. Now, bad things is the new normal in Nigeria. At the end of the day, if you take a look at all this that we're talking about in the power sector, uh, is it that we did not get the reforms in the power sector right ab initio? Because you're talking about even having a conversation, perhaps if we come down to ground zero, the Jonathan administration tried as much as possible to do reforms in the sector. This administration continuing that process. I do also know that the power sector is one sector that a lot of money has been pumped into. It's like basket, you're putting water. No, you, you, can't, you, you can't see it. So where do we go from here? We should start having conversations again from what? From <laughs> well, uh, Nancy, I, I support what my dear brother mentioned earlier regarding the government's uh, inability to pay the discos. It's important to remind you that uh, when these 11 discos were privatized, organizations, private individuals, invested their money to acquire these discos. And you know, an average businessman is interested in maximizing profit. Yeah. Now, le let me just take you a little bit back. The discos are like revenue collectors. If you look at the chain of collection, the 100% of money collected by the discos, uh, they only take 25% of the money. Jenkos takes 50 60% of the money. The transmission now takes the remaining 25. Takes 25, then the remaining 15 goes to regulators. Now I want to ask, if Tesco, who collects the money, takes 25%, do you expect that Tesco to use the same 25% to face the infrastructure deficit he inherited in a wire wire in the business. So are you saying that the framework we got it wrong, Abinisho? Thank you very much. You see, the regulations, the policies, 
the laws guiding Nigerian electricity supply industry is important the government stands up and streamline them. What do you mean by streamline? So does that mean, like he said, we'll go back to ground zero? No. Fine, we've succeeded in privatizing. But it's important that the regulations, the laws you put in place, be properly streamlined so that you can make it investor friendly. So the way the electricity market is right now is not investor friendly? To be honest with you, if you can sit the owners of this discourse down, they will tell you gradually they are losing the trust and confidence they have in this government. No, but you see, uh, while I, what happened to last privatization is actually like a symposium conversation. But here is my own, um, and I say this as an investor because we also put in money when you're uh, involved in projects. But if you give me this glass of water and says, I want to sell this glass of water, who is interested in buying? The conversation is, if you offer to buy for two naira, or you, and he offered to buy for ten naira, and then tomorrow, after collecting his ten naira, you said, oh, I didn't realize that the glass was three quarters.